All right, welcome to another episode, another uh, podcast around the county. Uh, I'm Miles Himmel alongside Supervisor, County Supervisor Jim Desmond here. Um, and we've got a special guest today, uh, Scott Lutwak from the CEO of Fit Athletic. And uh, Scott, if for people, let's just start here, people who don't know Fit Athletic, how do you describe it to someone? Uh, well, in, in the San Diego market, we have uh, five locations. We are uh, the premier uh, luxury fitness um, gym operator here in the market. <laughs> uh, we've been here since about, about 12 years. I just opened up uh, two facilities in the last six months. Um, one, of our, one of our facilities in uh, Whittle, Italy was open for exactly two months and 18 days before we were shut down you know, in planning and preparation for, you know, six or seven years. And, you know, uh, we had two, two months and 18 days to, to operate. Um, so that gives you some indication as to how frustrated we are here. Yeah. When you hear, well, and you are, <laughs> you go, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. And you're the, you're the main, main feature in Belmont park. You, you've got the pool and everything else. I mean, you're, you're, you're a San Diego, you're a San Diego icon, uh, yeah. uh in Belmont park. Yeah, so we, we, we did um, revitalize the plunge swimming pool in uh, Belmont Park. Uh, it was eight years under development, and uh, that facility was, was open for exactly five months and 18 days before the shutdown. Um, so, yeah, that, that gym is completely shut down at this time. Scott, when you hear the governor, we just, you know, what, we're a couple hours from, from hearing what he said and very con we're still confused. We're still trying to dig, dig through what it all means. It sounds like for your for fit athletic gym, uh, for fitness center, ten percent. When you hear ten percent, if I tell you you're the you're the guy, hey, ten percent of people can come through. What what do you say? I, I'm not sure what to do with that number. To be honest, you know, I'm I'm trying to digest it. You know, it's uh, um, it's very difficult to um, operate a full scale facility and staff it properly, but yet only allow. 10% of the people to come inside, you know, for example, you know, my average, my average facility, my average facility is 50,000 square feet, right? So a normal capacity I'm going to have in there is 750, 800 people at one time, you know, we have fitness studios and, you know, cardio areas and AstroTurf areas and all that. And now, you know, talking about 70 or 80 people in the, in the facility at one time. And we haven't gotten any clarification if that includes staff or not, because I mean, half of that 70 or 80 people inside that um, size facility capacity wise would be my staff. So it, it would be impossible for my business to function, you know, with such a city restriction number. Yeah. And, well, then, and, then, and then the boot not, and then the boot have no idea what to tell. Like, like what does that mean? I'm, you know, ten percent rent, no rent. You know, I mean, I it's it's been five months already, and you know, I, I have well over two hundred thousand square feet of of rentable commercial space right now in in San Diego, and I, there's there's not too many independently owned businesses that have that kind of square footage here in San Diego. So I'm in a very unique position. Well, I mean, how about uh, the the governor changed the rules here again six months into this thing is what it, it, it kind of appeared to me. And, and all of a sudden now we're in a color coded thing. Jim's you were open at 50 percent, weren't you? Before it was a, it was 50 percent and now it's at 10 percent. I mean, this is a lot of business, even the restaurants, they can go to 25 percent. It may not just pencil out. It's just like I forget it. I can't I can't do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jim, as you know, you came to visit my facility when we were in preparation for opening. We took, you know, we, 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 we spent all the, the money needed to, to bring the facility up to a certain level. We changed out all the air filtration systems. We, you know, cre uh, m moved out equipment, you know, provided all the social distancing, put up the screens, you know, did the whole list of, of things to open up safely. And the, the issue that I have is that there's no real data to support the punishment on the fitness industry. Gyms are open all over the world and all over the country right now with, at, at full capacity. And there's no evidence to support um, fitness being the villain in this COVID 
uh, uh, crisis that we have right now. We're we're actually part of the solution, not part of the problem, and it's 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 frustrating to be you know uh, not viewed as such. I, I was well, going to jump in here, Jim. I, I just wanted to ask Scott because I, I remember when we came and visited. Um, how many people do you employ? How many people have you had to lay off or furlough? What's that been like? Because I, I, I'd have to imagine that's got to be tough for you. It will be a day I will never forget, March 15th, you know, of, of, of 2020. I laid off 436 people in one afternoon. Mm. You know, it, it's I've, I've been an entrepreneur for, you know, almost 30 years. I've had fit for 18 years and it takes a long time to to build that kind of team and to let everybody go and just not have the ability to help everybody in the way that I usually you know try to do for all my employees it was a, it was a very very difficult day that it will take me a long time to to get over wow well and then do you, I guess uh, one of the things I've heard is okay you can still do the outdoor portion but I mean that was what was that even 10% of, of, of the capacity when you were able to move it to outdoors. So it, it uh, I guess you could still do that, even though it's been this weekend, it's going to be hot again. Uh, and, and so is, is that any sort of a like it's consolation that you can still do the outdoor and 10% of the indoor and it still probably doesn't pencil or, 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 or uh, cause you to bring enough people back. Yeah. So, so um, we do have some outdoor facilities in some of our locations and we have been doing some outdoor classes, but the ability or the, uh, uh, the option of bringing your equipment that you have inside and just bringing it outside, thinking that you can provide the same type of service outside is not even an option at all. Uh, for one, you know, we spend millions of dollars in equipment and the, the, the saltwater air in, the, in two weeks, uh, in two days, all that machinery, we would never even be able to bring it back inside. Oh, you know, I mean, right. you know, you, you remember, Jim, you were at Mission Beach on the top. We have that outdoor turf area, right? So we have a bunch of equipment that we keep outside all the time. And so it rusts out within 30 or 40 days. So you have to throw it in the garbage. Yeah, could you? It's a beautiful site there, right on the boardwalk, at, you know, in Belmont Park, and, and you got the, the huge facility and, and the pool and everything. Is there any, what's the capacity on the pool? I mean, is, is, is that a different number for you, or is that, is that the same for the plunge portion? So, so the plunge is operating at this time. Plunge is, out, is open right now um, because the plunge is not conditioned space. So we were able to um, uh, avoid the shutdown over this last 30 day period because uh, we had full air, uh, open air ventilation running okay. through the plunge. Okay. plunge. The plunge has remained open. There's, there's probably 100 kids in that pool as, as we speak. It's been, it's been very uh, well received um, while everything else has been closed down. Um, yeah. But people have been social distancing. It's been going well. And we've had no, one problem or one outbreak or any incident of anybody getting, anybody getting sick. Yeah, well, that's... Well, that's incredible. That's, it's really good. It's a kind of a testament to you know, your, the procedures that you're taking there. It's very good. One of the things that came out in this new color-coded uh, uh, program that the governor is now proposing, the new, the new, new upgraded uh, um, criteria, uh, is that you, you can't move from one color to the next for three weeks. You got to wait 21 days. Even if your numbers improve, over over time so we're in the third tier the third from the bottom tier i guess right now so in order to get to even the top tier that still has limitations you're looking at minimum six weeks that's if, if everything moves and, and so you know that's as soon as you can probably even get beyond 50 percent uh is what it appears and so it, it this new color coding system is not I don't think beneficial. I think it's just, it's another way to keep businesses closed as opposed to open. I mean, you know, a question that I would love to, to present to the governor is, you know, wh where's the input from the business community when these types of plans and, you know, color scheme, you know, ideas are, are brought, you know, in, into public uh, play here. I mean, is there the proper influence from the business community? If so, I, w I would like to know and, 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 and at least have a voice, because right? I just don't feel like throughout this um, 
uh, pandemic that the business community has had the proper voice. We're doing everything that we can to accommodate every request that's out there. But when, when these plans are being formed, I just don't believe that the, the business community is, is brought, being brought into the fold at all. And yet, you know, and it's not selfish because we're thinking about money. It's because we, we not only have responsibilities financially, but we have people, we have employees that we're trying to give them answers to. And so I, I, again, I have 436 people that would like to come back to work and I'm trying to give them accurate information and, you know, some information so that they can plan their lives. And it's, 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 it's being made impossible for us to do that. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I've been trying to stress is that every, every job is essential. It's essential to that person. It's essential to that family. It's essential to their kids. It's essential to get food on the table. Every job is essential, and we can't be picking and choosing winners and losers. And that's the, the methods that, you know, previously we had, and now this color coding system is doing the same. I, I completely agree. It's, 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 in fact, it's a little bit insulting sometimes when, you know, you're, you, when you have your, your elected politicians calling your business non-essential. And I mean, it's particularly in the fitness business where, you know, we believe that we are very essential for, for people's, you know, mental and physical, you know, stability and sanity. And so to, 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 to be even classified as non-essential when liquor stores and uh, marijuana shops are declared as essential, it's, it's kind of a tough pill for us to swallow. It's, it's very tough. That's very tough. Well, I, I, we're going to have a, uh, a, a press conference uh, Monday at 10 o'clock at the uh, steps of the uh, county office. Are you going to be able to make that? Uh, I'll be happy to participate. That'd be wonderful because we're trying, we are trying to do exactly what you mentioned is trying to get your, you know, businesses like yourself and, and other businesses and get the word out to, you know, and, you know, via these videos and send it to the governor if we have to, you know, go to the Sacramento, but having, you know, these, you, you know, your story told, you know, how many people you've had to lay off and having that, that told, I think is going to be very, you know, I'm hoping to be somewhat effective, but you're right. It doesn't seem to be that, you know, that the average person gets any input on, on a new scheme that's all of a sudden still keeping businesses closed. You know, I mean, look, businesses, you know, don't plan week to week. They try to, you know, make a little bit more strategic plan, long-term planning, you know. So w what does it look like to till the end of 2020, for example. I mean, we're in the tail end of, or we're in the end of August, but, you know, trying to devise a plan to get to January is what I'm trying to plan for right now. And I don't feel like the government is helping me do that in any way. Yeah. Scott, I was going to, you know, I, I was going to just, uh, I had a question because something that I, I'm always fascinated by, having never owned a business, but knowing how difficult it is, at least hearing from it, how do you make it when you have no no income or such little income and not knowing it? I, I mean, I, sorry to be kind of depressing about it, but how, how does that even, how do you do that? You have rent to pay. How does that happen? You know, statistics say that the um, you're not really going to see the real damages in for, 30, for, oh, for the next 36 months. It's going to take a while for what the real damages of the pandemic are to shake out because you know for example some you know a couple of my landlords have just said to me you know let's discuss it on the other side you know i mean there's you know two of my landlords i have not even really had much dialogue with since march 15th because there's been nothing to talk about so you know settling up the bill at the end of this thing and you know, who's going to be responsible for how much of it and what those payment terms look like. And, you know, I mean, there's no doubt that it's, it's, there's debt that's going to be thrown onto the business and every business is going to have to figure out how to kind of blend and extend, you know, what, what debt that is being forced upon them. Um, but, you know, fortunately, um, there's, I think we're at a time where landlords and tenants will be working together for their own mutual benefit more than uh, more than any other time in history. I, I think that uh, they, they're not on opposing sides of the table. They're on the same side of the table with the same common goal of survival. How do we survive? The landlord wants to keep this real estate in its portfolio, in their portfolio, 
and the tenant wants to, a second chance to, to get out there and bring, and bring the business back to a normal. I think that's a very good point. That's a, a, a very, I mean, and that's what it's going to have to take because otherwise if, if one, you know, if a landlord is hard nosed about it, it's like, then he's going to have an empty building, you know, and, and that's not, it's, that's not in their benefit uh, it, it, to their benefit at all. So um, I don't know, Miles, you want to kind of wrap us up and then we'll. Uh, um, yeah, well, Scott, I mean, just what do you say? You know, I mean, today there's going to be some industries that are, are, are I guess, hair salons, and, and we, we're glad to see some businesses reopen, but there's going to be many others, and that's what we're going to try and highlight on Monday that are suffering, that don't know if they can keep their doors open. What do you say to some of those people that say, you know, I, I don't know what I can do. I don't know what my business can do. You got to get back in and try. You know, I don't think anybody knows, you know, um, what the future brings, but if you had a viable business before the pandemic, you should have a viable business after it is how I truly believe it's what I truly believe. If you were, if your rec, if your numbers were good prior to, you know, March and you're, you know, you were able to pay rent all the time and you were able to pay, make all of your bills, it's going to be a little bit of a rough road to get back to that point, but you, you need to stay in the game so that you can get back to that point. Yeah. Don't, don't give up. Giving up is never, you want to give up in the moment, maybe because, you know, there's, there's some moments right now where I feel like, you know, the whole business, the vision of the business that I've created now, like how it's going to have to execute when it opens, it's not aligned in the same way anymore. People wearing masks, social distancing, you know, my whole, the whole vision is building a community of like-minded fitness individuals that got to hang out together and work out together and, 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 and be part of a community. Now they're not even allowed to sit and talk to each other. They got to be six feet away from each other. They got to be in and out of the gym within a certain period of time. So, you know, the fundamentals of the business, temporarily have changed dramatically but what, what i can't do and what nobody should do is let it overshadow what what the what the world might look like after the pandemic calms down well we'll keep working and trying to get businesses open and get you back open uh, you know to 100 percent uh, we're going to keep knocking on the door and and doing that effort in my office and um you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see you on Monday at the press conference and, and uh, hopefully, you know, bring the same passion and tell your stories. And we're just going to try to get as many of these stories out as we can so that we can wake up some of the people in Sacramento and, and let them know how they're affecting our lives. I appreciate it, Jim. And I appreciate you. you your, your efforts in the business community are not unnoticed. Everybody is very appreciative of the aggressive approach and efforts that you've made to get us back open in, in, in the first round and now in the second round. So I can't thank you enough personally for all the efforts that you've made, honestly. All right. Thanks. Well, Scott. We'll see you Monday.